Executive saloons aren't the most exciting things in the world, are they? They begin their lives as cars to take people to work and then slowly become taxis and finally, probably, cheap runarounds for people who remember that car from way back when that seemed quite good. John's dad bought one, yeah? However, with each new one there's a load of cool stuff bubbling under a lovingly crafted exterior designed to entice you into its seat. The stuff that five years ago would be alien to us, but in another five years will seem completely indispensable. This is the new Mercedes E-Class, and it's full of stuff that you're probably going to want. First, the shape. It's rather pleasant. I've never really been a fan of Merck's looks until recently. Apparently, the design guys wanted it to look like a coupe for a couple of reasons. One, so buyers will presumably think they're cruising down Route 1 when really they're on a commute. And two, it's super aerodynamic. So much so that the E220D, the one with a 2-litre diesel engine, emits 102 grams per kilometre of carbon dioxide. That's less than any of its rivals. And it's more efficient as well. It'll do over 70 MPG if you drive it like a saint. In here there are toys, oh so many toys, but the main one is this dual screen. It is optional, but you'd be a fool not to spec it because it's incredible, frankly. On one side, the passenger side, the centre console bit, you've got a giant nav screen, you've got access to pretty much everything, all the infotainment, your phone, and even an owner's manual. Now, the one in here, the instrument binnacle, that is just for me. So I've got my rev counter speedo, you can have a number of styles. The larger screen also shows you the front and rear cameras in amazing definition. I know a fair few people that will be very jealous of it. But that's just the biggest bit you can see. There's stuff you can't. This car can pretty much drive itself using something called Drive Pilot. It'll keep the car in lane using Steering Pilot and work in conjunction with the Adaptive Cruise, so you don't really need to do anything. The Speed Limit Pilot will read the nav and road signs to keep you at the correct limit. Oh, and Active Lane Change Assistant will change lanes for you so long as you indicate and it's clear. This has yet another party piece in that you can open, close and start the car using NFC on your phone. You don't actually need a physical key if you don't want it. So for example, if you're away on business and you have the key to the car with you but you need it moved, you can send your key via your phone to your most trusted chum who can then take it home for you or take it on a jolly without you knowing. The infotainment itself is handled either by the usual control wheelie thing or by touch sensitive buttons on the wheel. The displays can be changed to look classic, sport or progressive which was apparently inspired by Tron. The nav will show you the nearest fuel stops and how much the motion lotion is. If you could spec a commode I'm pretty sure you'd never have to leave this thing. And I don't think I would want to because the interior is just beautiful. Previously I thought Mercedes interiors were a bit overdone, a bit chintzy, but the balance here is just perfect. The materials are stunning, the design of it, the flow of it, it just feels nice and it's really quiet in here, in case you hadn't noticed. And that's because the front of the car is now smaller. This thing has a 0.23 drag coefficient, which means it scythes through the air very efficiently, very cleanly. But because of that small front end, less wind goes over the cabin, which means it's whisper quiet. And if you get the optional air suspension, I imagine it would be like driving on a cloud. So there we are, the new Mercedes Future Cheap Runaround is full of lovely tech and is very comfy, but is it quick? Well, in the UK we're going to get a bunch of engines, but we're in the E350D, a 3 litre V6 diesel. It's got 258 horsepower and it'll do 0 to 62 in 5.9 seconds. The question is, is this any good to drive? The car does feel light and fluffy, it's not too bouncy, it's not too harsh, it's not too hard, it's not an uncomfortable experience, it doesn't punish you for wanting to have just a slightly harder experience. And it does feel good, this is by no means a sports car, it's not even a GT, it's just a comfy executive saloon. The braking on this is pretty damn good, again there's loads of positive feedback from the pedal and well the brakes work in an emergency, I've had some errant cyclists on this drive. Now the engine itself it is smooth, it's not as quiet as I'd have hoped it would be, and the V6 is a bit droney. It's not the most exciting sound in the world, it just kind of groans at any speed. Gearbox is the Mercedes 9G Tronic, you really can't tell when it's shifting gears. 
it's very, very odd, if I'm honest, because you just kind of go and the car goes, oh, you, you, you need another gear, off you go. You don't feel it, you don't really hear it all that much. The safety tech, all the drive pilot stuff, that's where it gets clever, but also a little bit too clever for my liking. Because yes, people can do some catastrophically stupid stuff, and I think this is geared up for those people, because it hasn't kicked in that many times during my time with a car, but I do wonder whether it's on something of a hair trigger. For example, I was reversing in a lay-by and a car was coming on the road quite far from mine and it slammed the anchors on immediately and let off lots of beeps and noises and, well, it scared me half to death. What's happening with cars now is that we're getting to a point where the drive is becoming secondary. A lot of people expect it to drive well. They expect it to be smooth. They expect it to keep them safe. Now we're getting into an era where cars aren't just technologically advanced. They are hyper-tech. They will think for you. They will do everything for you. Everything will be a finger prod or a poke or a thumb rub away. We're a few steps away from autonomy as it stands at the moment, but in the intermediate period, this is a fantastic age to live because you can engage with the car, you can feel what it's doing, you can drive it as hard as you want to, and you'll still be comfortable and you'll still be safe. And one day, you can tell the car to drive as hard as you want it to, you can tell it to drift round every corner if you want it to, I imagine and you can sit in the back with a paper and a cup of coffee. For the people who don't like driving, who buy cars simply because they need to get from A to B, that's gonna be a fantastic world. But right now, an E-Class is probably a perfect car for someone who doesn't like driving because it's smooth, it's relaxing, it's comfortable. You can see out of it, mostly. That said, this A-pillar is quite big and taking a left-hander, you do have to kind of crane round it. But we're in a brilliant era for cars, we're very lucky to be where we are, and this is a fantastic example of where we're going. So it's good then, that's hardly a surprise. After selling over 13 million E-classes over the years, each with their own innovations like ABS and 9-speed gearbox and others, it'd be pretty hard to make a duffer. This car isn't about speed, it's about keeping its occupants comfortable and most importantly safe. Yeah, the V6 diesel can be a bit droney and the touch pads on the steering wheel are a nice idea, but they're a bit flawed as it stands. However, in all the new E-Class does its lineage, very proud 